So welcome to this uh, NEET PG mock test discussion which is the structure that is being shown in the label B. So you should know how to recognize the structures on the MRI. Is it, is the voice clear? Can you close the door? Yeah. So you have a putamen, phonics, internal capsule, insula, etc, etc. Internal capsule is the point where the corticospinal tract from the pyramidal cells of beds will be descending down. Ipsilaterally it will reach until the lower part of the medulla. It go to contralateral side and ultimately will innervate the androphon cells. And androphon cells are responsible for all of our motor activity. The reason any internal capsule bleed on the right side will lead to the hemiplegia on the left side is what you have to basically remember. So you should know where are the basal ganglia, how is the internal capsule located. Sometimes both the internal capsule and also the basal ganglia, both of them can get involved in the bleed. That is called capsuloganglionic bleed is what you have to basically remember. A 62 year old has got right shoulder pain. So you can see a mass in the apex of the lung. So it's a case of Horner's syndrome. So Horner's syndrome, I mean Pankow's tumor typically lead to Horner's and Horner's typically lead to the development of uh, the ptosis is what you need to remember. Is it breaking? Uh, is it clear? Okay. So we welcome Megha, Akshay and everybody. Don't worry, the class just started. 43 year old with brain MRI with neurological complaints and there is a typical lesion and uh, possibly what the patient might have suffered from. So basically the uh, patient is uh, having a lesion in uh, the territory of the anterior cerebral artery. If the middle cerebral artery is occluded, then you get hemiplegia. Posterior cerebral artery, if it is occluded, you get vertigo, vomiting, giddiness and all this. Because medulla and cerebellum, they are all the ones which are affected in PCA stroke. Whereas ACA, anterior cerebral artery stroke, will cause a contralateral lower limb monoparesis. Only contralateral monolimb uh, uh, monoparesis. Unlike middle cerebral artery which lead to a complete hemiplegia on the contralateral side is what you need to basically remember. Now, what is the nerve block you are seeing? This is an easy question. Pudendal nerve block classically. Now there is an injury to the person. The neck injuries are being divided into three different zones. Zone 1, 2 and 3. So whenever the injury is involving the zone 1, typically the apex of the lung is in a very close relationship with that. That is the reason that lead to development of the injury to the lung pleura. Whenever the injury is there in the zone 1 is what you have to basically remember. Megha, Akshay, can you please punch whether the voice is loud and clear? So, uh, now this is a typical example of a penetrating neck trauma in the zone 2. And this is an example of a penetrating neck trauma in the zone 3. That's what you need to recognize. Very commonly this is a question that comes in uh, the NEED PG exam. Yes. Now a 49 year old with arm clumsiness and physical examination shows a increased muscle tone. So increased muscle tone can be a spasticity or it can be rigidity. If it is a basal ganglia involved, extra pyramidal tract involved, it will be rigidity. If it is an internal capsule involved, it is a pyramidal tract. So spasticity. So what is this? But the patient is having a clasp knife type of rigidity which is nothing but spasticity. So spasticity is something that you see whenever internal capsule is the one which is affected. So what you are able to see is the internal capsular 
injury is what I want to um, reinforce. A 37 year old, typically on MRI, what is the important clinical feature that you expect? So, hearing loss, decreased corneal reflex, a noise in the ear which is very disturbing called hyperacusis. These are the things that you expect whenever the lesion is in, typically involved in this part of the lateral part of the medulla. So, uh, now, why do you get uh, hearing loss? Because of the 8th nerve injury and uh, corneal reflex is 5th nerve and a noise in the ear which is very disturbing is because of the 7th nerve. Stapedius involvement lead to development of hyperacusis. Now, occlusion of the artery which is being labeled A. What is A? Anterior cerebral artery. Whenever anterior cerebral artery involvement is there, frontal lobe is involved. Frontal lobe is the highest center for the micturition reflex. Whenever socially we stop ourselves from micturating in a public place, it is the frontal lobe which is basically responsible. Then a 45 year old occlusion of the artery which is being labeled B, what is it going to lead to? Typically B is associated with middle cerebral artery. Middle cerebral artery. So you must know what is middle cerebral artery occlusion feature side. Contralateral phase arm and leg paralysis. There is a sensory impairment in the contralateral phase arm and leg. Paralysis of the gaze to the opposite side and there is an aphasia and there is a contralateral hemiplegia, contralateral paresis and the slurred speech etc etc. Similarly you should know what are the ACA stroke features very clearly one of the favorite question of the image based question in the need PG exam. Tomorrow once more same question when it comes in exam you will remember me in the exam hall. Let me tell you right now. Cerebral arteriography once more shows the artery which is being labeled C. What is the artery which is labeled C? So typically whenever the posterior cerebral artery is involved, then typically you have the artery which is being labeled C. So if you come back to the circle of Willis, the artery labeled C was PCA. So whenever PCA stroke is there, what are the important clinical features, doctor? There's a homonymous hemianopia, memory deficits will be there, perseveration and severe visual deficits like cortical blindness, etc. Because portus, posterior cerebral artery is the one which is the uh, important blood supply that goes to the visual cortex. That's the reason cortical blindness. What is the difference between the blindness that occur because of the retinal lesions versus the cortical blindness? Typically, if you look at the pupillary reflex, whenever you throw light, the pupil constricts, you know, that is still preserved when the blindness is cortical because the pupil reflex is mediated at the level of midbrain only. So, if the retina is intact, midbrain is intact, pupillary reflex continues to work. Only thing is, uh, whereas in the case of the peripheral blindness, pupil reflex get affected. That's the point you need to appreciate. Now a 48 year old with left leg numbness, whenever he walks you notice that he lifts his left foot higher and he does this um, uh, and his left foot slaps to the ground with each step and on neurological examination he is unable to evert the left foot and there is a sensory loss in this distribution. So you must know doctor, dermatomal distribution pattern of a lot of peripheral nerves. How does peroneal nerve supply, how does common peroneal supply, sciatic supply etc etc. So they say common peroneal nerve area of dermatomal distribution is what you have to basically remember. Typically patient presents with emergency room with a sharp pain in his neck and shoulder and uh, most probably uh, neck and also shoulder. So that is the reason which nerve is the one which is affected in this. So it is the phrenic nerve which is most uh, often affected. 23 year old with multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis lead to demyelination of optic nerve. So typically whenever you throw the light into that eye, 
it doesn't constrict but when you throw it into the other eye right so there is a afferent pupillary defect afferent pupillary defect whenever you throw into the other eye the contralateral pupillary constriction occur when you throw the light directly that light is not transmitted for you to get the constriction but uh, when you throw the light into the other eye the consensual light reflex is there no that is whenever you throw light into this eye even this side pupil also constricts that will cause constriction so suddenly you will feel when i am throwing light into this eye it is not constricting but when i moved on to the other eye then it is constricting is it a lazy light reflex is a feeling that you get actually it is not lazy it is a consensual light reflex which is intact but uh, afferent direct light reflex is lost whenever there is any demyelination of optic nerve is yes, what you have to basically remember so it is optic nerve demyelination which lead to development of a afferent pupillary defect is what you need to basically remember now typically you have a infarct what is this area thalamus thalamus is called bedroom all secrets happen in the bedroom so all sensory system invariably should reach thalamus from thalamus it will relay into sensory cortex only exception is smell olfaction does not report to thalamus that's what you need to basically remember there is pain proprioception or vision anything should pass through the thalamus typically nearer the thalamus what do you have geniculate bodies middle geniculate body lateral geniculate body lateral geniculate body is for vision or audition ears are lateral but it is a medial geniculate body eyes are medial but it is a lateral geniculate body right that's what you need to remember then what is this lesions neurofibromas uh, sorry uh, these lesions are melanomas so melanocytes originate from neural crest is what you need to remember where do you see quadrant nucleates is basically entamoeba histolytica is a typical infection then you have thrown the light and pupillary dilatation is there but the corneal reflex is preserved so when is that situation typically seen typically whenever both atropine and also epinephrine they lead to development of mitriasis but atropine abolishes the light reflex whereas the epinephrine doesn't abolish the light reflex that is what you need to basically remember now typically it is a methyl cobalamin which give that carries on the methylation reaction which is the one which is uh, uh, the linking enzyme in this given reaction so it is a methyl transfer reaction where methyl group is transferred from methyl tetrahydrofolate to cobalamin to form the methyl cobalamin and this methyl cobalamin transfers the methyl group to the homocysteine is what you need to remember so what you need to do is if you are unable to match up see there are always some knowledge defects in our uh, entire medical school preparation we still pass exams in medical school you don't need to know everything if you know everything as undergraduate what is left to read in md so undergraduation is like survival with a working knowledge sometimes that working knowledge may be very little compared to the whole knowledge when we prepare for exam we fall short we will be knowing constantly we are doing mistake in this topic of uh, folate metabolism and uh, vitamin b12 when you are constantly doing wrong don't ignore or don't develop a fear for it let me tell you in the u medico you have a video library in the video library there is a biochemistry in the biochemistry you are having the folate metabolism there will be a 40 minute video lecture just if you review that and once more go back to your same old textbook satyanarayana or uh, uh, harper or any book you will master the moment you master it next exam you won't do mistakes so as many number of areas where you are falling short if you recognize fill the gaps that's how your curve will improve 
and there is a purpose. So next to 25 mock tests, you must at least discover two weak areas every test. 25 into 250 weak areas will increase your score by 50 more marks and that is all the difference between you being topper and loser. So if I am successful in making you to realize that, I am definitely a successful teacher. Let me tell you I am very successful teacher because I could uh, know where the baby falls down and how to hold the baby, make them to learn how to walk and leave them and they became top athletes. They are now top neurologists, cardiologists, nephrologists, much more educated, much more uh, knowledgeable than what I am. Those students who also sat like you and uh, prepared for exam. So, but what is the difference? To be ignorant is human, but at the same time to fill that ignorance also is human. Only humans can do that, no other animal species, right? 45 year old is typically having hirsutism. Hirsutism is a feature of minoxidil. Now what is the drug typically which is acting at the site B? So site B is uh, fundamentally the area of DNA synthesis. Actually options were wrongly given. A cyclovir must be there in the options which is uh, missing among the options. So options are wrongly framed. Sorry for that. Now, which is the drug whose mechanism of action is being shown in this picture? Typically it is the clindamycin and the macrolides that inhibit the translocation of the peptide chain from the site A to site P. Once more let me tell you doctor, antibiotics, chloroquinolones, then penicillins, macrolides, uh, tetracyclines, what is their mechanism of action? In which part of the RNA and protein synthesis do they affect? Very important topic. If you have not, uh, if you are doing constant mistakes, take one hour time today to master all antibiotics mechanisms, develop your own method of how I am going to remember and uh, it will be very rewarding for the tomorrow's exam. Now at the site C, site C is DNA gyrase. DNA gyrase typically fluoroquinolones, they act on the DNA gyrase. Then what is this? Morphine, ganja. So, typically, how does what is important about morphine? Morphine is contraindicated in head injury patients. Morphine is contra because it leads to respiratory depression. Na? So, if you use it as a painkiller, head injury patients are more vulnerable to the uh, respiratory depression. They will go into arrest. Now, typically, what you are seeing is a cleft lip and palate. Typically, it is a part of the fetal hydantoin syndrome. Whenever the uh, pregnant woman consumes phenytoin. Now at the site 4, uh, which is at the level of the distal convoluted tubule, which is the drug that typically acts? Typically at the collecting duct, potassium sparing diuretics, they act by inhibiting the sodium channel is what you need to basically remember. Now this is the oral candidiasis. Obviously, cardiosteroids lead to development of oral candidiasis. You are having a child with rickets. That is the place where you use cholecalciferol. The site D shown here is RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase is inhibited by rifampicin. Is the one which inhibits the DNA dependent RNA polymerase is what you need to remember. Now what is this graph typically showing? One of the favorite MCQs repeatedly asked in the NEET PG exam among the image based questions. Efficacy and potency of the drug. Based on the graph, how will you know, how will you recognize and how will you answer the question? So because the graph shifts to the right side, the potency has decreased is what you need to basically remember. Now, what is the diuretic that acts on the site 3? 
you must be very sure. So typically it is the thiazides which act by inhibiting the sodium chloride import in the distal convoluted tubule is what you need to basically remember. Now, yeah.